For those of you who don't know us, we are Viaplus. We are a private maritime security company. We're one of the largest in the world, and these are some details you see behind me. Now, our experience comes from the fact that right now we're doing 180 ships per month in the Indian Ocean and 18 to 20 operations per month in West Africa. The West Africa operations per vessel average six days. So we have significant experience in regards to what's happening on the water. But since we're going to talk about security, I like this. The, the state of being free from danger or threat, security is a good thing to have. Right. So this is the incident map of the last year from November 1st, 17 to November 1st, 18. As you can see, there is plenty of activity. However, we're going to focus on the two regions of the previous slide, which is the Indian Ocean high risk area and, of course, the Gulf of Guinea. Looking at the Indian Ocean HRA, there were 41 reported incidents, out of which 16 were attacks. And by attack, we mean a skiff, usually, firing rounds towards a merchant vessel. Most of the incidents incur, occur in the Bab el Mandeb, which is the choke point between the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. And this is for a number of reasons, of course. It's not just piracy, which right now is at an all-time low, Somali-based piracy, that is. But it's also because of the conflict in Yemen, which overspills into the maritime domain. At the same time, we have other actors in the region, such as smugglers, who are very active and many times are misinterpreted as pirates. These are just two examples out of many. The one to the left is the Hios Freedom that was severely attacked by a number of skiffs, four if I'm not mistaken, that had seven to eight people on board. However, the vessel escaped because the armed security team on board did a good job. It wasn't us, if anybody is uh, wondering. Now, on the right, there is another vessel, the Al Abqaiq, which is of Saudi interests, uh, a vessel that belongs to Bahri, and it was attacked by most probably Houthis. However, this vessel also had an armed security team, and eventually it escaped the attack. This is the latest incident, and it's really interesting because it happened in the Somali basin, where everybody up till now has been saying that it's safe. Most operators wouldn't engage security for transit, for example, from South Africa to the Persian Gulf for vessels transiting this exact route. Now, the Sydney was attacked 340 nautical miles east of Mogadishu. Safe sailing for that region usually states 200, 250 nautical miles. However, there are many ships that transit that exact spot much closer to the Somali coast and don't deploy security. A specific vessel received um, small arms fire. An RPG was sighted. It came to five meters of the vessel. The armed security team on board managed to keep it safe. So wrapping up the Indian Ocean, because I want to go to the Gulf of Guinea mostly, there are a lot of players in the region. Somali-based piracy is dormant but not extinct, and the Sydney is a perfect, perfect example of exactly that. The conditions within Somalia are deteriorating, especially south, south central, not so much in Puntland and Somaliland. And it is conducive to pirate action group activity in the very near future. Unfortunately, the military assets in the region, especially EU NAFOR, which has the clear mandate for anti-piracy, are depleted. They only have two vessels. This is just a reminder of things that were happening in the very recent past. A vessel has received uh, several RPGs. I'm sure we all know these images. Personally, I've seen them live many times. But recently, we don't get them that often. And there's a reason for that. So despite the fact that this crew member was in a ship that was hijacked, he was lucky because he only rece received one shrapnel to his chest could have been much worse. And of course, when pirates take over a ship, it looks very ugly. I want you all to pay attention to the fact that the razor wire didn't work. It's very easy to um, destroy razor. 
These are some people that were arrested. So making the Indian Ocean more secure for mariners and trade, we believe strongly that the armed security teams on board ships are the ones that have made, that have changed the tide. And us, as a PMSC, we take great pride in making sure that everybody gets their job done and eventually goes home to their family safe and sound. But there are bad apples, we're not all the same. Many of us, many PMSCs, shouldn't be operating. So it's best to look for quality and compliance, and it's easily found. You just have to ask around. Moving to the Gulf of Guinea, which is by far our favorite part of the world, 140 reported incidents, out of which 25 were only attacks, but another 30 of those attacks uh, evolved into hijackings. Naturally, the hotspot is the Niger Delta for a number of reasons. However, we are seeing the exportation of the techniques used by Nigerians and Somalis to other parts of West Africa. And this is very significant. It is a game changer. The Frio Nagato was attacked heavily, but was saved because it had an armed security team on board. However, these two vessels were not that lucky. They didn't have security on board, and they were hijacked. The MV Glarus, which is a Swiss-flagged Balker, was attacked, boarded, and 12 crew members were kidnapped. We know now that those crew members have been released after ransom was paid. The Pantelena is a very interesting um, incident because it's the first new cargo theft incident. So it was hijacked in a position where people would think is not high risk. However, owners lost communication with the vessel. Two weeks later, it reappeared. The crew was fine. They were unharmed, but the entire cargo was missing. So this is the map showing hijackings in the past year. The interesting thing is off Point Noir. So it's the most southern incident that we've ever had. And the most eastern is the one between Lome and Accra. This is recent activity uh, off Point Noir. It's um, just a couple of weeks ago. So from these three vessels that were hijacked, 15 crew were taken. One crew member was injured. And the LPG that was involved in the first attack was actually doing bunker operations at the moment. So you can imagine <laughs> how interesting that will have all been. So what's the solution for West Africa? We feel that there is a solution. The best thing is to proper evaluate risk. We need to understand what risk we run when we operate there. The operating environment of West Africa is unique. So we shouldn't mix other regions or experience from other regions and apply it to West Africa. There are realistic mitigation measures. You must work with a legitimate security provider and not through agents, which is highly irregular and illegal in many occasions. And it's very good to build a relationship of trust with one or more security providers so that you understand the operating environment that we are called to support. We don't feel that anything is going to change in the future in Nigeria specifically and especially. Maritime aggression and piracy are going to continue to transcend. There will always be problems with the revenues from the export of crude. The federal government of Nigeria, for example, is supposed to give subsidies to the local governments of the states that are oil producing. If that doesn't happen, those local governments will release the militants to go um, and attack international oil interests to apply pressure on the federal government to do what it's supposed. There is a breakdown right now on what we call cooked diesel, which is basically illegally refined product. And there are, pricing is going up, and uh, there are other shortages as well at this moment as we speak. However, corruption and security is within the entire country from south to north. 
poverty and opportunity is there. So many people don't have any other options. They will turn to criminality. And one big issue that many of you know is the MOUs between the security companies and the Nigerian Navy. All MOUs have expired as of January 18. None have been renewed. We're all operating in a state of limbo. However, last discussions I personally had with the Nigerian Navy brass said that it's a political issue and most probably will be resolved after the elections in 2019. So we're all waiting for that. It's not just ships that need protection. This is the largest FLNG the world has ever seen, and we were lucky enough to protect it in a totally different area of the world. This was from South Korea to West Australia. This is the FPSO Egina that was delivered to Nigeria, received daily threats from the Niger Delta Avengers, who are the most active militant group in Nigeria. However, it is operating without any problems because of the security it's receiving. This is kind of a long slide, and I feel Apostolos is a hot breath on my neck. So if you want to read it, you know, just ask for the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you.